hello guys welcome back to another awesome video we are going to be looking at functions in this video so um, it says every task can be divided into subtasks each of which can either be directly represented in the form of a code or divided into smaller subtasks this method is called stepwise refinement so functions are used to uh, are used for writing the code of subtasks to be solved the code that describes what a function does is called function definition so this is basically an example of a function but i am going to explain it in perhaps a more simpler way just open my meta editor we are going to create a new project new and then template yes i'll name this uh ea just ea Yes, I'll just name it EA, finish. So there we go. So as you can see, these, these are the, okay, this is the basic skeleton of, um, of our, of the, of the platform basically, or I don't know, space where we're gonna write the code for our expert, uh, expert advisor. So, I don't know if you noticed these three functions here, but before we get to that, let me actually explain in my own words what a function is. So with the function, there's usually a return value first. Return, return value. Let me actually comment these out so that MetaTrader does not complain about them. So we have a return value, right? That is the first thing. Let me put those together to show that they are one. Then after we have a space, then we have our identifier. Or basically what we call, what we can call the function name. Um, function name. Function. Function name. Yes. So that's basically it. So we have the return value first. Then afterwards we have our function name. And then after our function name, we usually have to put parentheses. And in these parentheses, they can be um, parameters taken in. So parameters taken in. And then after that, we have curly brackets. And then whatever is written inside this code is what is executed. This is basically the body. Anything inside here between these two curly brackets, that's what we call the body of the function. This looks a bit messy, so let's just like, uh, do an example. Um, I didn't comment that out properly. So yes, guys. I use the wrong slashes. So let us uh, do an example. So I'll just say, um, let me just make it simpler. So we say we have our return value first. Let me uncomment this. We have our return value, and then we have an identifier or function name, and then we have a parameter. So some functions take in parameters, others don't. And that is where we're going to, in the next two videos, we're going to look at void and um, non-void in detail. So this is basically our function. Now let us go on top and discuss more about these here that we have, these functions here that we have. So um, I don't need these, so we can just remove these. We can remove these. So we have the on init function. Then we have the, the on d init function, and then we also have the on tick function. So basically, as you can see, return value is an integer. We're going to return an integer. That is what the return value is. And then this is the identifier or function name. And then as you can see, this function does not take in a parameter. And then as you can see, this function here returns something. It returns an integer remember this is the return value and inside the function at the end it returns an integer there 
and then we have the de-initialization uh, de function or on d in it your oh, pronunciation man so this one is a void which means it does not return anything the return type is void as you can see there is no return the difference between these two is that this is void and this is not void so this has a return type of integer and this does not return anything and then we have the on tick function so these are the basic three functions that pop up whenever we um, want to create an, an expert advisor. So let me just explain these in detail. So this function here, what does it do? So whenever it is attached on, onto our chart, it is executed. Whenever attached, this function here is executed. So we can say whenever it is attached whatever that is that is in this function is executed and then that not only that but whenever you change time frames the, the, the expert advisor is removed and reattached so basically it is done within a split second whenever you change time frames your expert advisor is removed and reattached onto the new time frame, basically. Um, when you change time frames, it is reinitialized. Reinitialized. This put yeah, this there. So that is how the sum works. Now the on D in it. So this function here, unlike the on init function, let me just copy and paste to make things easier for myself. So unlike the on, on init function, this one is initialized or, or whatever is in this function here is, um, is processed whenever the EA is removed. So whenever the expert advisor is removed removed this function is what called and also the same thing applies whenever you um, change time frames just like here the expert advisor is um, expert advisor is removed and since it is removed you see this function is also executed and then the on tick function how does the sun work so with the on tick function usually whenever this function here is um called whenever there is a new tick in the market in the market so we are going to check examples let me just remove this so whenever there's a new tick in the market or on the chart, basically let me just say on the chart to make it easier. In the chart. So this function is executed whenever there is a new tick in the chart. Okay, let us have an example. So we are going to just print something out. Print. Um, This function has been initialized. So basically, this is for the on it function. And then we're also going to print something out for the on d init function. So this function has been d initialized. And then for the on tick function, we're going to say there is a new tick. There there is a new tick in the market. Uh, in the, maybe we can say in the current asset, or let's just say in the current market, yes. So there is a new tick in the current market, yes. So guys, this here should be printed out immediately when we 
attach our um our what do you call this our our ea expert advisor it sh this should be printed and then this here you will see that it will be constantly printed because there is always a new tick in in the market and then once we remove it this here should be printed okay let us just save this and then we are going to test it out and see if truly it works so i just uh, compiled and there is no errors so let's move on to our mt5 and ea there it is ea i will attach this Okay, I had an EA here before, so yeah, let me, okay, so you see, okay, let me remove it now, because <laughs> it's going to keep on, remove, let us do this, so you see, the first thing that was printed was, this function has been initialized, because we attached it, whatever that was in the, on init function, gets what? executed and then as you can see these these as you can see price is always moving here let me show you you see price is always moving and as price moves this right here the on tick function carries on printing or executing whatever is in the on tick function and then as you can see once we, re we removed the 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 the, the expert advisor what, what is printed this function has been de-initialized so guys you can see and we usually put most of our code in the on tick function because we want to uh, uh, get have access to whatever new movement there is on the market. So yes, um, let us go back to our empty, uh, our our editor. Yes, so we have printed this, but let us just um, let us just comment this out because it will keep on printing and printing and printing. But now let us just look at this too and change time frames to see what happens. We just compile, F5 is F7 is to compile, and then F4 is to go back to our chart, and then I will put this on again. Actually, let me just remove all of this so we can see the new one. Um, EA. Okay. Okay. So as you can see. Ish. Okay, I know what happened. Let me remove first and then clear. Yes. And now let me reattach. Okay. So the function has been initialized. Now let us move on to the 15 minutes time frame. So it was initialized, then de-initialized because we changed time frames. It was removed from the previous time frame, which was M30. It was removed from M30 and then re-initialized, placed again onto the M30, M15. So if we change to one hour, as you can see, it was de-initialized and then re-initialized. Then if we remove it, then it's only going to show us the function has been de-initialized. I hope it makes sense, guys. I hope it makes sense. I hope it truly really makes sense. But um, that is pretty much it in this case. And as you can see, this function here does not take in any parameter. And then this one here takes in a parameter and then this one here on tick does not take in any parameter so um let us see what we can do um okay so yes in the next two videos i'll the first video in the next video i'll explain more about functions that have the return type void yes see you in the next video guys